It's Saturday. Today is Saturday. And it's December 29th, 2018. You better get your hot pockets in the oven and heat those babies up. Cause I'm about to whisper words to you. The woo. <laughs> Yeet. Last time I read the Dark Souls wiki, people were like, you should read the Dark Souls wiki and just read item descriptions. And I was like, okay. So, now we're gonna do the Bloodborne wiki, cause that one was requested a lot. <laughs> oh well. I'm just gonna hit the random page button on this Bloodborne Wikia site and we'll read whatever comes up, I guess. <laughs> also, I really don't know what I'm doing with ASMR stuff, so if I accidentally make a really loud noise, I'm so sorry. I apologize in advance. Also, I gotta stay hydrated and drink from my water jug every so often. Sounds like this. Are you ready for war? Is Moonside Lake. That's a very nice name. The Moonside Lake is a location in Bloodborne, the video game, for the PS4. <laughs> Moonside Lake appears to be a small pocket dimension where Rom hides away and shields Yarnum from the Mensis ritual, as well as keeping the blood moon from rising. <laughs> Connections. Bergenworth. <laughs> Bergenworth. Notes. The lamp becomes available after defeating Rom. Trivia. If a corpse of a brain sucker or garden of eyes falls through the ground on Bergenworth, chances are they are now in Moonside Lake. The more you know. Did you know that? I bet you didn't know that. Okay, the next page is Old Hunter Badge. <laughs> Hello. The old hunter badge is a key item in Bloodborne. Here's the in-game description for extra lore. This hunter's badge, crafted in Garman's time, has no practical purpose except perhaps to assist in romanticizing about the past. Past. The badge was a special privilege for the hunters of the past and should not be dishonored. It should be left in peace unless one is truly prepared to assume the will of those gone before. It's dropped by... Gearman. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the first 
the first Sunday. <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Notes Unlocks the set worn by Gearman when he sits on his wheelchair and his weapon when players fight him Can be obtained without starting a new playthrough if players consumed three third umbilical cords <laughs> That's really gross Trivia it would seem this badge was merely a form of showing respect between the old hunters. It served no purpose, save as a badge of honor amongst their kind. It adds a slow clap, clapping, <laughs> clapping messenger with his head tilted backward behind the original messenger of the bath messenger. The more you know. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'll try, I'll try to not laugh and take this very, very seriously. This is very, very serious Bloodborne lore, okay? Everyone please be serious. Be serious and go to sleep. Logarius's Seat Logarius's Seat is a location in Bloodborne. Logarius's Seat rests at the highest visible point of Forsaken Kanehurst Castle. Notes This location is impossible to leave without the use of a lamp or a bold hunter's mark. Or the hunter's mark. <laughs> Trivia since it is impossible to backtrack after reaching the ladder that leads to the boss arena, the developers likely left some bold hunter's marks on a nearby corpse to allow players to retreat should they be unprepared for the upcoming encounter. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm teaching you things, okay? Teaching you things and you better go to sleep. Trivia. Trivia makes you go to sleep. <coughs> Shrek bless you. White church garb. Fit with the setting of Bloodborne, I have some kind of strange illness, some kind of viral illness that is causing me to cough and uh, have the vapors. So it's not like I'm actually sick in real life with a cold or anything. I'm just, I'm, uh, I'm trying to fit the setting. It's, I'm getting very, very, uh, <laughs> in the role. <laughs> it's role play. <laughs> I'm gonna turn into a beast. The white church garb is a chest attire in Bloodborne. In-game description. Attire of special church doctors. These doctors are superiors to the black preventative hunters and specialists in experimentally backed blood ministration and the scourge of the beast. They believe that medicine is not a means of treatment, but rather a method for research and that some knowledge can only be obtained by exposing oneself to sickness. Like me. <laughs> Be ready to expose yourself to sickness by hearing me talk to you. Availability. 
found in the forbidden woods on a roof surrounded by crows. Head to the area with the dog cages and go right, then ascend the ladder. That's how you get to my house. <laughs> Notes. <laughs> it has the highest slow poison resistance of all the pieces of chest attire. It is a gendered attire, meaning it has a different model for male and female characters. The male robe looks cooler. It's got a cool, cooler cape. I like the cape on the, the white church guard for boy characters. That's just my opinion, though. <laughs> the next page is... Hunter, enemy. Several hostile hunters can be found throughout Bloodborne. A notable difference between the player character, you, and these NPC hunters is that while their reload animation for the firearms is much longer than yours, they also have infinite quicksilver bullets. This can become very annoying when the hunter in question is in possession of items such as the old hunter bone or a call beyond. Several mini-boss type hunters such as Jura, Yurie, Yuri, and the Bloody Crow of Kanehurst are actually hunters with all their stats set to 99. Locations found Central Yarnum, Eileen the Crow, found in a hidden area near the rafters Uses the Blade of Mercy and Hunter Pistol I was actually watching uh, someone playing Bloodborne a few weeks ago And it was their first time and they went up to the area where Eileen the Crow was And thought that she was an enemy and they just <laughs> attacked her outright and I was like no <laughs> it was horrible old hunter Henrik found at the tomb of Odon during Eileen the Crow's quest line uses a saw cleaver and hunter pistol old Yarnum retired hunter Jira found an old Yarnum using a Gatling gun on top of a tall building uses a stake driver and hunter blunderbuss <laughs> blunderbussy <laughs> I'm sorry that guy is kind of annoying Jira's, Jira's ally found in the area below Jira uses a saw sphere spear and a hunter pistol. Cathedral ward. Two Yahar ghoul hunters in the cathedral ward. Found between the Grand Cathedral and Yahar ghoul unseen village entrance. Yahar ghoul hunter wears Yahar ghoul black set, wields tonitris and wooden shield. Drops for bolt paper. <laughs> Yahargul Hunter wears Yahargul Black Set, wields rifle spear, and Ludwig's rifle. Drops ten quicksilver bullets. Bloody Crow of Kanehurst, found in the Grand Cathedral during Eileen the Crow's quest line. I'm sorry, I have a lot of space. There's people with a lot of weapon opinions in the chat. <laughs> Four bolt paper. The Bloody Crow of Kanehurst wields Chikage and repeating pistol, uses old hunter bone and numbing mist. Where 
is Kanehurst set except Kanehurst armor and curl feather garb. Drops blood wraps her carol room. <laughs> Forbidden woods. Younger Madara's twin found after picking up Valter's helm. Wields hunter axe and hunter blunder bussy. Uses Madara's whistle and fire paper. Where's butcher set? Butcher. But, 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 butcher. <laughs> a butcher. <laughs> I pronounced that like it's like I combined the word butt and butcher. Like a butt butcher. <laughs> but butcher. <laughs> ah. Bergenworth. Y Yuri, the last scholar found in the Bergenworth Lunarium building. Wields threaded cane and rosmarness. Rosmarness. Uses auger of a Britus and a call me on. Where's choir set? <laughs> There's a lot of words on this. I'm gonna skip down to the notes section for some interesting tidbits. Father Gascoin, as well as German, share similar behavior to regular NPC hunters, although they are not categorized as such. Father Gascoin is found in central Yarnum at the tomb of Od Ogdon, using a hunter axe and a hunter pistol that fires a shotgun shot, similar to the hunter blunderbuss. Bussy. Garman, the first hunter, is found in the hunter's dream, encountered as a possible boss fight after killing Mirko's wet nurse. He will use a hunter blunderbuss variant that has the ability to fire a single pellet, like a bullet that can put players into a staggered position. Wow. Random page. What if Hero Brian was a hidden secret Bloodborne boss? Mine Minecraft Bloodborne. Osteoporosis. I'm so sorry if I say the name wrong. I'm guessing it's Yuri. <laughs> Yuri. <-a. laughs> Yuri. -a. Yuri. Yuri. -a. Yuri, the last scholar, is a hunter and a member of the choir. As a member of the choir, she dons the choir set, uses the threaded cane and Rosmarinus doing combat, and can also make use of the Augur of Ibritus and a Call Beyond. <laughs> Strategy Yuri will mainly use the untransformed version of the Threaded Cane in melee combat. She can also use the Rosmarinus while backing away to gain distance. It is best to stay close to Yuri during the fight, as she will more likely use a call beyond when at a distance, which has extreme tracking and deals high damage. It can be inter interrupted by shooting or hitting her when the spell animation begins. Due to the cane's long windup, Yuri can be easily staggered and stunlocked into a corner. She drops four blue elixirs. Trivia. Her name implies that she is in fact the last scholar at Bergenworth, the one who stayed by Master Willem's side even until now. Another interpretation is that she is the last remaining choir member, as she clearly wears clothing from the church choir 
an institution distinct from Bergenworth. It is implied she raided Bergenworth along with other choir members, such as Josefka's imposter, where they stole Master Wilhelm's third of an umbilical cord. Gosh, I wish I had third of an umbilical cord. Am I right, gamers? <laughs> Sinister lore, Lauren Root's chalice. I like the word chalice, it's a good word, even though it contains the word lice, and lice does not make me think of good things, when it's combined with cha, it becomes chalice, so it sounds prettier. And who doesn't love really fancy cups? You can drink stuff out of them and feel like a queen. You can sit in your bathtub, drink some, some wine out of a, a big fancy chalice, and pretend that you're very, very important, when in reality you're really sad and really sweaty. In-game description. Root chalice that breaks multiple labyrinth seals. When used in a ritual, this sinister chalice summons the sinister resonant bell. The bell ringing woman appears to be a mad Thumerian. <laughs> Thumerian. <laughs> there are trace remains of medical procedures in parts of Ailing Lauren. Whether these were attempts to control the scourge of the beast or the cause of the outbreak is unknown. Note, Additional Right Sinister Bell is for online use only. The bell ringing woman does not appear offline. Uh oh. <laughs> there are no notes or trivia for this item. Let's continue. Bloodstone Shard a bloodstone shard is a material in Bloodborne, and it sounds extremely painful. In-game description. A solid shard that forms in cold blood. After death, a substance in the blood hardens, and that which does not crystallize is called a bloodstone. At the workshop, these bloodstones are embedded in weapons to fortify them. Availability Found on a corpse in central Yarnum. Dropped by Large Huntsman Uncommon Drop Scourge Beast Common Drop Sometimes drops one, uncommonly drops two shards. Kidnapper <laughs> Common Drop Sometimes drops one, uncommonly drops two shards. Purchased from the Bath Messengers. I like the Bath Messengers because they always look like they're having a good time, despite it all. I think going forward into the new year, we should all try to be as lively and positive as the Bath Messengers. Just chill out. Just Relax in a bath and let the good times roll. Be a skeleton. Be a tiny little skeleton thing. Use. Bloodstone shards are used to upgrade weapons to plus one, plus two, plus three. This can be done by choosing fortify weapon at the workshop in the hunter's dream. Notes. Note that firearms, guns, are the only left hand weapons that allow the use of blood gems, and they only contain one blood gem imprint shot slot. <laughs> Schlot. After weapon level plus three, twin bloodstone shards are required to upgrade weapons. Trivia. 
This material is the spiritual successor to Dark Souls' Titanite Shard, an upgrading material for the first levels of a weapon or armor set. The clotting process, also known as coagulation, changes blood from a liquid to a solid. We're not, also, we're not only learning about video games here, we're learning about science. We're learning about the science of the human body, and I think that's really important and valid. Sometimes you just have to learn about blood, and that's all you can do. Oh god. <laughs> Bloodstone chunk. Chunks, huh? Is a material in Bloodborne. I need water. <laughs> That song from Bake Monogatari Renai Coagulation. It's a, it's a good one. Please clap. The in game description of the Bloodstone Chunk A solid shard that forms in cold blood. After death, a substance in the blood hardens, and that which does not crystallize is called a bloodstone. A chunk will never appear in the blood of an ordinary human. Seek deadlier foes if bloodstone chunks are needed. Availability. Rare drop from Church Giant in the Lecture Building Second Floor. Scourge Beasts in Yahargul Chapel. Scourge Beasts in the Upper Cathedral Ward. Lost Child of Antiquity in Forsaken Canehurst Castle. Drops from bosses in Chalice Dungeons in Deaths 4 and 5. Found on various corpses in Forsaken Canehurst Castle, Yahargul Unseen Village, and Nightmare of Menzis. You can also purchase it from the Insight Bath Messengers for 20 Insight. Use Bloodstone Chunks are used to upgrade plus 6 weapons to plus 7 to plus 9. This can be done by choosing Fortify Weapon at the workshop in the Hunter's Dream. Notes The most effective farming method is likely believed to be by spawning in your Hargul Chapel and slaying the various malformed scourge beasts <laughs> found in the area. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I'm a malformed scourge beast. Click that like button. Ha! Another legitimate and likely less stressful way is by farming the various lost children of antiquity found in Forsaken Canehurst Castle. It's time for trivia. It is the spiritual successor of the Titanite Chunk in Dark Souls. As the description implies, this item really does not drop from anything other than a monster. Oh, the next page is a really good boss that looks kind of cute, but also gross. Mm. Rome, the vacuous spider, is a boss and a kin in Bloodborne. Despite her title, Rom resembles a gigantic pill bug rather than an arachnid. Just like me. She has a silverfish-like tail and a bulbous body from which vegetation appears to be growing. Possibly cold blood flowers. 
Her face resembles a chunk of pumice and is covered in eyes, suggesting its con <laughs> connection to the Great Ones. Rom is initially non-hostile until provoked, at which point will use powerful magic attacks to defend herself. R Rom, Rom hacks. Rom is accompanied by creatures known as the Children of Rom. They resemble actual spiders, but with the same shaped head, and appear to have blades for legs. That's amazing. These spiders are possibly either the literal spawn of Rom, or were created in order to defend the creature. Location Moonside Lake found in Bergenworth after jumping into the water from the balcony where Master Willem is located. Oh, are you ready for some lore? Cause there's some lore. Da 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 Rome, the vacuous spider, controls the barrier that prevents normal Yarnamites from seeing the true horrors around them, such as the lesser amygdalas crawling around the cathedral ward. Rom was once a scholar of Bergenworth, whom at some point went through metamorphosis into a kin great one, courtesy of Kols, according to dialogue given by Mikolash. The Bergenworth spider hides all manner of rituals and keeps our lost master from us. A terrible shame. It makes my head shudder uncontrollably. That's a note from library area just beyond the tomb of Odom. The spider hides all manner of rituals, certain to reveal nothing, for true enlightenment need not be shared. Ah, Kos, or some say, Kosum, do you hear our prayers? As you once did for the vacuous Rome, grant us eyes, grant us eyes. Miklash, host of the nightmare. There's a lot of strategy for this boss. Are you ready for this strategy? I hope you're ready. I'm going to drink some water so that I'm entirely prepared. Ah. <laughs> the fight is broken up into three, three phases. <laughs> Phase one. Rome will spawn numerous spiders to surround and guard her. They move rather slowly, but can deal a lot of damage. I'm sorry, I had a hiccup. <laughs> if the hunter has low vitality. Like Rome, the spiders have armored heads and vulnerable bodies. It's best to attack them from behind or bait out their jumping attack. Alternatively, attacking their heads Three times will wear away the armor. <laughs> the spiders can be killed before attacking Rome or completely ignored. During this phase, Rome will be non-hostile and will retreat whenever approached. Once enough damage is dealt, Rome will teleport to a different location and start the next phase. Phase 2 Rome will spawn more spiders and begin using arcane attacks. When the hunter is at mid to long range, Rome will summon arcane crystals from the sky. When the hunter is at close range, Rome will either do an AoE blast or summon crystals from the ground. Once enough damage is dealt or enough time passes, Rom will teleport to a different location and start the next phase. Phase 3 
This phase will be the same as phase two. Only this time, Rome will flail around if the hunter is close to her body. Beware, as her flail attack is most deadly near her head, and also more difficult to anticipate. It is possible to summon League Confederates for the fight against Rome. You must have the Impurity Rune equipped to summon them. Old Hunter Henrik wields Saw Cleaver, Hunter Pistol, and Throwing Knives. Younger Madaris Twin wields Hunter Axe, Hunter Blunderbuss, and Madaris Whistle. <laughs> Conclusion after the battle, approach Yarnum, Thumerian Queen, for a short cutscene. The hunter is then teleported to the Cathedral Ward with the following message. Ritual secret broken. Seek the Nightmare Newborn. The Nightmare Newborn mentioned is Mirgo. Oh boy. Tactic. Tic-tacs. Rom has minor weaknesses against fire. Applying bolt paper or fire paper to a weapon will help deal extra damage. The Tonitris is very effective, as Rom is a kin great one, and kin will take extra damage from bolt. The most common strategy is to ignore the spiders completely and use hit and run tactics. Run in a small figure 8 around Rome until an opening is found. Attack a few times, then retreat. Keep an eye out for the other spiders. However, the most effective strategy is to strike down the spiders while not taking eyes off of Rome, to ensure that she does not employ meteor showers, arcane blasts, or attempts to body slam you in later phases. I wish she would body slam me. Make sure to attack a spider and roll away as another spider will likely attempt to attack you. Never strike Rome's head or a spider's head. You will do pitiful damage. Absolutely worthless. I'll laugh at you if you do that. Horrible. Laughable. Weak. <laughs> Another strategy is to stay just behind Rom's head and attack using the flame sprayer. This will cause her to constantly retreat due to the continuous damage. It's recommended to kill the spiders first when using this method. Kill kill it with fire. Ha 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 ha. An even better tactic is to get a summon and have both of you use the flame sprayer. The continuous hits and damage will prevent her from teleporting and starting the next phase. When encountering Rom in a chalice dungeon, the pillars in the room can block her meteors. It is also much easier to isolate and eliminate the spiders, as they tend to be spread out around the boss room rather than cluster around Rom. Rom also is more aggressive in the chalice dungeon, and you will likely need to back off many times. Notes. By dealing enough damage in the first phase, it is possible to force Rom to skip the second phase of the fight completely. If you do this, Rom won't teleport and will still be completely docile to the player. The spiders that normally spawn in phase two will still appear after defeating Rom, it is possible to use a bold hunter's mark to leave the area without triggering the blood moon phase. This is due to the fact that the blood moon's trigger is to approach the figure that appears after slaying Rom, rather than slaying the Rom of Rom itself. Players can then go back to the arena when they feel the need to progress in the game naturally. There is a chance to encounter a peculiar glitch during this fight, 
in which additional spider minions start spawning from the very beginning, but won't attack. It's possible to exterminate them all, then deal with those in close vicinity to Rome. Those are aggressive. Thus leaving her unguarded and unable to summon more minions to her aid. Trivia. <laughs> spider trivia. Rome the Vacuous Spider is mentioned as the Bergenworth Spider in a note found in Ogden Chapter Library. <laughs> Rome and or the expanse below the lake is referenced by the Lunarium Key as a secret Master Willem left with the lake. Rome is a kin great one she was granted being a great one by Kos, but at the same time, she is a kin. She was beckoned by Wom to create a barrier, so humans couldn't see the lesser amygdalas clinging to buildings. Rom also has more than one physical body. The second is in the labyrinths under Yarnum. Rom has in total 16 legs, 8 on each side and ten tails. Five short, five long. That's a lot. Using the tiny music box will make Rome stop from moving. This spider must have been placed with Willem's knowledge and probably during Lawrence's time at Bergenworth. In an interview with Miyazaki, Rom was confirmed to be female also known as the idiotic spider in the Japanese version based on the novel The Idiot by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Why are they so mean to this spider? <laughs> Alright, it's time to hit the random page button once again and take a sip from <laughs> my water jug. <sighs> Baka spider. A sprite cranberry for big chungus. <laughs> Undead Giant The Undead Giant is a Chalice Dungeon boss and enemy in Bloodborne. The face of this miserable being reveals similarities with both church giants and church servants, suggesting that all these towering creatures belong to the same unholy kind. Its face is the only clue about this connection, because the rest of its body is twisted and rotten beyond recognition, due to the crude surgery that grafted blades and firearms to its arms. Sounds pretty sick to me. The undead giant is a massive humanoid being that has weapons for hands. How does it do anything if it has weapons for hands? It must have trouble with a lot of common household tasks Like washing the dishes and doing the laundry I feel kind of bad for it It has large fleshy lumps on specific parts of its body that When attacked will burst Causing massive damage to the giant I also heard this about boobs. This may also stagger it for a short time, allowing for attacks on its head and a possible visceral attack. There are four variations of this boss. Dual Blade. This version has two large blades for hands. Flaming Blade. 
This version is like the last version but with one key difference. It has one large flaming blade for a hand. It's on freaking fire. I don't want to cuss. This is a Christian stream. It is the rarest variant and appears only in an oil swamp. Its attacks can ignite the oil around it, dealing area fire damage. <laughs> Axe and cannon. A second virgin, virgin, <laughs> virgin, has an axe attacked, attacked, <laughs> an axe attacked, an axe attached to its right arm, and a cannon for the left. <laughs> it is present in Chalice Dungeons as both a boss and enemy that players can find while exploring. Beware its cannon, as it can frequently one-shot players. Chain Giant The last version has a club attached to its right arm, and a sword for the left. The large, fleshy lump is around the backside of its right leg, like a butt, making it difficult to get to. It also has chains attached to its head. These will be stuck at the beginning of the fight, but once unstuck, they will make for a deadly weapon, as the giant will flail them while attacking regularly. <laughs> ah. Strategy Use caution in quick or well-timed strikes. If enough damage is dealt to a leg, he will kneel down, allowing the chance to use a visceral attack, but he never flinches from gunfire. One possible tactic is to stay at a distance and bait the giant's jumping attack, which has a slow recovery animation. With the addition of the Old Hunters DLC, players now have a ranged alternative approach to fighting this boss. The Bow Blade provides a means of attacking comfortably from a distance while still retaining a good damage output. <laughs> Notes. They are weak to fire and bolt damage. They have giant tumors that can be burst for massive damage. They appear sometimes as a roaming mob. Trivia! Ooh. These giants appear to the same to be the same as the church giants, thus implying that the healing church found an enslaved giants from the hinter tombs. This also makes sense, as the naked unarmed giants can be found in what appears to be a very close to the surface portion of the hinter tombs on the path that leads to Yosefka's clinic's shortcut. <laughs> From the, hit the forbidden woods. I keep getting the hiccups in the middle of a sentence. Help. Ooh. The Flaming Blade Giant was first seen on a video during Miyazaki presentation at the PlayStation Experience in December 2014. It has not been seen since by the players for three years and was presumed to be cut content. However, on November 2017, a group of tomb prospectors managed to find this rare enemy. Others can encounter this rare enemy by using the glyph I didn't know how to pronounce that Okay 
the next page is the Bone Ash Mask. It's a head attire in Bloodborne, the video game. In-game description. A mask made of bone ash, worn by the oldest keepers. The keepers who mined the slumbering great ones gained eternal life, preserved an ashen form in a ceremony of flame that cremated body and soul. The long, pointed hat is a symbol of the old keepers and is considered evidence evidence <laughs> of their <laughs> companionship forged in a certain sin. Notes. It belongs to the Bone Ash set. Can you hear this? If I like, I'm wearing this like fluffy pajama poncho thing. And the fabric is like really, really soft. I rub it together. Can you hear it? <laughs> or is it too soft? It's really, really warm. Lore. Pajama lore. Cold Blood Dew is a consumable item in Bloodborne. In game description Droplet of cold blood containing blood echoes. Echo. Used to gain blood echoes. Hunters sustained by the dream gain strength from blood echoes. They imbibe the blood with thoughts of reverence, indeed gratitude for their victims. Relatable. <laughs> Here's some more pajama lore. I'm wearing a pajama set that I got for Christmas. Uh, it is not a Bloodborne armor set, unfortunately. But the lore is that I got it for Christmas and I opened it on Christmas Eve. And the shirt says cozy on it. It just says cozy. <laughs> and the pants have like patterned stuff on them and it looks really cute it's good they're good pajamas and I'm really excited about it okay 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 next page The Abandoned Old Workshop is a location in Bloodborne. An um, old abandoned workshop that bears a remarkable resemblance to the Hunter's Dream and is most likely the real life counterpart to the workshop. The entrance can be found by dropping down from the first floor of the Healing Church Workshop and entering a dark room full of planks and ropes. To the left of the entrance is a group of three ropes, stretching down to a small platform below. The player must drop to this platform, being careful not to go too far and fall to the bottom of the pit, which will result in death. From this platform, drop off to the right and open the large doors ahead to reach the workshop. Lore. I need some water before I read the lore. Lore. The old abandoned 
The abandoned old workshop, I set it out of order. Oh no, was the first workshop founded by Garmin, the first of the hunters to fight the beast. S beasts, plural beasts. When the healing church decided to create the healing church workshop and began sanctioning hunters of their own, led by Ludwig, Gehrman's workshop fell out of use. Overcome by despair and loneliness, he used a third umbilical cord, likely to be the one found at the abandoned workshop, to contact a great one, the Moon Presence, in order to create the hunter's dream. The dream was designed to be a way of helping hunters with the beast hunt by bonding them to both Yarnum and the dream. So if they died in one realm, they could wake alive in the other. Another goal of Germans was to find a loyal companion, and this was granted by creating a living version in the dream of the doll he made, which can be found in the abandoned workshop. Lore. <coughs> what Germans likely did not know was that from the moment the dream was conceived, he was forever bound to it. He is trapped within the dream and is tasked with guiding and helping all the hunters that pass through during the countless hunts. When a hunter fulfills their contract, he is also the one to release them from the dream. He hates his fate and longs to be freed. This can be heard in a rare monologue while he is resting in the gardens. Loot. Loot. The following items can be found in the abandoned old workshop. Small hair ornament. Third umbilical cord. Doll hat. Doll clothes, doll gloves, doll skirt, old hunter bone, notes. Entering the abandoned old workshop grants plus two insight and awards the source of the dream silver. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hiccup. The source of the dream silver trophy. <sighs> they won't stop. I have contracted the hiccups. It's too late for me now. Trivia. Lowering the background music allows players to occasionally hear the voice of a woman talking in a seductive tone while wandering the area. Huh? What the heck? <laughs> what kind of seductive tone? Like, ooh, come here, big boy. You wanna come into my workshop and uh, make some tools, sexy, handsome man? That's my impression of a seductive voice. Next page. Forbidden Grave. The Forbidden Grave is a location in Bloodborne. Past the Forbidden Woods, through the incessant snakes that have infested it, lies the Forbidden Grave. Bosses. Shadow of Yarnum. Connections. Forbidden Woods. Birkenworth. I really like saying Birkenworth. <laughs> Just say it. Just say Birkenworth in a soft voice. Birkenworth. Birkenworth. 
freaking worse. It's a good word. It, it, it really... It's spicy. almost choked on my water. I didn't know that was possible. But it happens. You live and you learn. And today I've learned that you shouldn't tilt a water bottle back too far. And drink slowly and carefully. And remember to breathe through your nose. Here's some life hacks for you all. I hope you enjoy them. Notes. The Forbidden Grave Lamp becomes available after defeating the Shadows of Yarnum. One can summon Old Hunter Henrik and Young Madaris Twin, provided the player has the Impurity Rune equipped. Trivia. Much like the entirety of the Forbidden Woods, there are tombstones meant for the Great Ones here. What makes it interesting is that it's an enormous congregation of giant tombstones, about 20 of them, all in a small space when compared with the rest of the forest. This makes the name Forbidden Grave a bit misleading. What it is, is a graveyard of great ones, or, even more bizarre, a mass grave for great ones. Regardless, both have interesting implications. Next page. I have played Bloodborne. I'm really, really, really bad at it. I streamed it on Twitch forever ago, and I think I uploaded a highlight to my YouTube channel where I encountered the rats for the first time, and I was really scared, and I started screaming. So feel free, feel, feel free to watch that if you ever want to laugh at me being a coward. The hunter tools are a type of consumable item in Bloodborne. Hunter tools are items that can aid hunters in their journey. They can be found through the world of Bloodborne, and can be a great boon. Boon! For those who delve into the arcane. Upon activating any hunter tool, a specific amount, amount of quicksilver bullets will be consumed for its activation. Failing to have the specific amount will result in an unsuccessful cast of the tool. Arcane Hunter Tools Hunter tools are available to the player once they are found, but only if they have the necessary arcane requirement to use it. Some are defensive, others offensive. Blood Tinge Hunter Tools <coughs> Hold on <laughs> With the addition of patch 1.07 A new Hunter Tool was added to the player's arsenal this one, as opposed to all other hunter tools, scales entirely off of blood tinge, and deals pure blood damage. <laughs> Notes. It can be a good idea for players who wish to focus their playstyle around hunter tools to use Carol runes that cater to the use of quicksilver bullets, such as the Odin Writhe and Formless Odin Runes. Players who don't want to invest heavily in Arcane can still get to use a fairly good variety of Hunter tools by just raising the stat to 15. 
It allows you to cast all defensive type arcane hunter tools in the empty phantasm shell which buffs weapons by a static amount. Going a step further is recommended so players can access the Black Sky Eye, a hunter tool that has many useful quirks to it. Trivia. Trivia. When casting hunter tools that focus on dealing arcane damage, the player will summon a portal to the cosmos and from it, the attack is executed. I can feel it. I can feel the cosmos. Hunter tools are essentially the bloodborne equivalent of spells in Dark Souls. The only difference that they all scale with a single stat, save but one. I. I is a carol rune in Bloodborne. Description. A secret symbol left by Carol, runesmith of Birkenworth. A transcription of I, as spoken by left behind great ones, allows one to make additional discoveries. I symbolize the truth Master Willem sought in his research. Disillusioned by the limits of human intellect, Master Willem looked to beings from higher planes for guidance, and sought to line his brain with eyes in order to elevate his thoughts. That is the true galaxy brain. Notes. Who? <laughs> Useful for when players need to farm resources like bloodstone chunks or blood gems. To acquire the highest possible amount of item discovery, stack all eye runes and equip the milkweed rune, which also grants item discovery, albeit a minute amount. Item discovery is not always a good thing since players can only get one item per enemy death. Having a higher level of item discovery can actually decrease the chances getting the intended item to drop by boosting the chances of rare items, thus decreasing the potential pool of items. However, when it comes to blood gems, the highest amount possible is generally better. Trivia. Master Willem began his research about beings of higher planes long before Carl started their transcriptions of the Old One's runes, Old One's words into runes. <coughs> Therefore, it's unknown if this rune was inscribed in Master Willem's brain by Carl, or if it was given to him by the Old Ones themselves or other eldritch entities. As it happens that all hunters have the hunter's mark in their minds. Mar <laughs> their minds. <laughs> their minds. <laughs> With no apparent explanation. <laughs> the end of the description says, Master Wum sought to line his brain with eyes in order to elevate his thoughts. This fragment talks about the process of gaining insight in order to gain knowledge beyond the ken of men. But it also implies in a subtle way that insight also means eyes on the inside, meaning in this case, eyes on the brain. The brain. I got eyes on the brain. You know what I'm saying? The eye rune is reminiscent of the elder sign from the Cthulhu mythos, as described by mythos writer August Dearlith. 
A warped five-pointed star with a flaming eye in the center. <laughs> it's time to get hydrated. I'm in the corner because I'm very afraid. <sighs> Empty Phantasm Shell is a hunter tool in Bloodborne. It looks kind of gross. It's like, <laughs> it looks like a gross bug. In-game description Empty invertebrate shell that is said to be a familiar of a great one The healing church has discovered a great variety of invertebrates Or phantasms, as they are called Shells with slime still harbor arcane power And can be rubbed on weapons to imbue them with their strength Gross I have to increase the text size on my page so I can read it better. <laughs> my eyes are getting old. Characteristics The empty phantasm shell is a hunter tool which acts as a buff to imbue a non-infused weapon with 80 arcane damage for 3 quicksilver bullets. Which lasts for one minute. <laughs> Notes. Particularly useful against Sumerian opponents, since they are weak to arcane damage. Trivia. The buffed weapon will emanate a pale blue light that will emit a strange ringing sound. Despite being called a shell, it seems as if it were sort of a cocoon or exoskeleton that housed the familiar, most likely a slug. The appendages draped across the madman garb resemble this shell. What a funky little bug shell. Charred Hunter Trousers are a legs attire in Bloodborne, the video game. Description One of the staple articles of hunter attire fashioned at the workshop. A product of the scourge of the beast that once plagued old Yarnum and culminated in the town's fiery cleansing. Designed to be highly resistant to fire. Wearers of this attire hunted down victims of the Scourge, who survived the raging flames and stench of sing singed blood. <laughs> stench is a very bad word. Stink, stank, stunk. <sighs> I wanna be Winston. Loron Silver Beast is an optional boss in Bloodborne. The Loron Silver Beast is identical to the regular Silver Beasts found in the Nightmare Frontier and Nightmare of Mensis, although it is significantly stronger. Location Lower Loron Chalice Dungeon. That was a bit of a tongue twister. Lore Lauren Chalice Dungeon. Lore 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 Lauren Chalice Dungeon. Lore Lore Lauren Chalice Dungeon. Lore Lo 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 Chalice Dungeon. 
Apart from its increased attack power and defense, the Lauren Silver Beast is no different from the regular versions. <laughs> it is easily interrupted and very vulnerable to visceral attacks. When boosted by the claw mark rune, it is possible to deplete half its health with a single counter. It is also very weak against fire damage. During its armed phase, the beast will sometimes breathe fire by using its torch. This is very easy to dodge, but has the same stun mock quality as the flame spare weapon. Usually as a follow up to this attack, it will perform a jump attack, which can be parried by your firearm at any point while the, the beast is in the air thus giving you the opportunity to perform a visceral attack. The beast will switch to its unarmed phase when below 50% health, and will attack with electrical blasts and claw swipes. While it is more aggressive in this form, it is unable to attack directly behind it, and can be defeated relatively quickly if trapped in a corner. Do 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 random page random page and some water You all better be sleeping or I'll be very angry. Ashen Hunter Gloves The Ashen Hunter Gloves are in Arms Attire and Bloodborne. In-game description Attire of the Retired Hunter, Jira Painted with ash in a ceremony to ward off blood, Jira is known through his contact with the Powder Kegs, the heretics of the workshop. He is said to have been both uncommonly kind and dreadfully foolish. Jura felt defeated by the state of old Yarnum, and renounced his hunter's vows. The Ashen Hunter Gloves can be purchased from the Bath Messengers for one insight after defeating Jura. Kirk Hammer. The Kirk Hammer is a trick weapon in Bloodborne. A trick weapon typically used by healing church hunters. On the one side, an easily handled silver sword. On the other, a giant obtuse stone weapon, characterized by a blunt strike and extreme force of impact. Trick hunter weapons forged in the healing church workshop, said to be hidden somewhere in the Grand Cathedral, were made to the tenants, tenants of a rival school of craftsmanship. a cut description, and the first two parts of the description are the same, but the bottom part is different. <coughs> it was changed in patch 1.07. The church takes a heavy-handed merciless stance toward the plague of beasts, an irony not lost upon the wielders of this most symbolic weapon. Availability can be purchased from the Bath Messengers in the Hunter's Dream for 3,000 Blood Echoes after obtaining the Sword Hunter badge. I'm also really tired. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 
Oi. Oh, there is a really loud car going by outside. Sadly, there are no cars in the Bloodborne world that I know of, so I can't tell you any more. Notes. The silver sword used is identical to the silver sword of Ludwig's Holy Blade, albeit slightly shorter, as the Kirkhammer itself is shorter. They also possess the exact same moveset. Pook! <laughs> In the long sword mode. <laughs> I have the hiccups again. This weapon deals 50% righteous damage in its long sword mode. Trivia. The root word Kirk in British English was once a common word for church. Or more specifically, a Church of Scotland. Therefore, the name of the weapon of the Church Hunter Workshop literally means Church Hammer. Despite being referred to as a stone hammer, it's more than evident by its shape, carvings, the type of wear on it, and the sound it produces upon impact, that the hammer is, in fact, made from some sort of metal, likely steel. The head of the hammer is inscribed in Norse runes. The Kirk hammer was the starting weapon for the church hunter class that was showcased during the Bloodborne Alpha test. Wow. Wow. Let's replace all the music in Bloodborne with that. It is... <laughs> Hold on, I have to drink. <coughs> uh, the cold mucus never stops. It is 5.26 p.m. And the sun went down like an hour ago. <sighs> Here's some cut content for you. The Big Burned Warrior is a cut content from Bloodborne. The Big Burned... <laughs> Coughing isn't really ASMR, is it? Is there coughing ASMR? Like, soft... Soft coughs? Soft coughs. version of the burned warrior with a slight difference in their burning aura and different moveset. There are three variants. Sword wielding, sword and bow wielding. They can use their bow as a melee weapon if the player gets too close to them. And spear wielding. This enemy only exists in the game files. They look kind of like they're just like really large shadow people, except they're glowing red. They really do look like big burned warriors. <laughs> I have tuberculosis. <laughs> I think this co content was either discovered or showcased at least by YouTuber Lance McDonald. If you're interested in any, like, interesting 
Bloodborne and Dark Souls cut content stuff. He makes a lot of videos about it. Sometimes I watch them before I go to sleep. There's a few really cool ones with cut Dark Souls 3 stuff. Alright. The Bloodletting Beast. The blood 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 the Bloodletting Beast is a chalice dungeon enemy and boss in Bloodborne. The Bloodletting Beast is a gigantic hulking creature. Its back has been split open and its face is heavily scarred and mutilated, although it still retains a humanoid, humanoid shape. Even with its colossal size, the beast is capable of stretching its arms to reach opponents, and its attacks are incredibly fast. In the Fmiru Ihil Chalice Dungeon, I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong, an even more mutilated version of the beast can be encountered. Mutilated. This version lacks a head. Although this does not impair its vision, and it is capable of launching parasites out of the wound on its back. Relatable. When low on health, a gigantic parasite worm will replace its missing head and attempt to bite opponents, inflicting rapid poison. Let's move on to the notes. Notes. As a true beast, the bloodletting beast is sensitive to fire and serration. <laughs> this is true for both versions. The headless version is one of the few enemies and even fewer bosses to inflict the rapid poison condition. This creature is without a doubt the largest beast in the game and one of the largest enemies overall. An absolute unit, likely only smaller than the one reborn, and the amygdala. Trivia Bloodletting was a medieval practice where it was thought that illnesses could be released from the body by bleeding the afflicted patient. Many have theorized from the remains of Lawrence's beastly skull found in the Grand Cathedral that the bloodletting beast is indeed Lawrence, fully transformed. This is due to both skulls having roughly the same size and having large gashes in the same spots. Despite being found and fought in the hunter's nightmare, it is believed that Lawrence is merely a tormented soul in that realm. While his physical body lingered in the chalice dungeons and was, most likely, even slain by Braidor, <laughs> thus why it misses the head. Though it seems confusing, one must remember that the chalice dungeons are produced from bits and pieces of all the time something was within them, which makes it possible for finding the bloodletting beast in its various stages of life and lack thereof as the same holds true for many other creatures, like Abritas, who was originally found in the dungeons and then brought to the surface by Master Willem. Woohoo! Water sounds. I only have like a few sips of water left, so I'm gonna have to end soon so that I don't get really dry and parched and sound like I'm dying. <laughs> Beast Hunter's Blood Gems are a type of blood gem in Bloodborne. In-game description.
description. A blood gem that fortifies weapons and adds various properties. Blood gems are especially rare bloodstones that grow on cold blood. Blood gems are kneaded into weapons using workshop tools, but only when of matching shape. Circular blood gems are normally used to fortify firearms. Notes. The counterpart to Kin Hunter's blood gems, also widely regarded as the superior of the two due to the large number of beast enemies and bosses when compared to the kin. Ho ho ho. Next page. Executioner Set is a set of attire in Bloodborne. Availability. Forsaken Canehurst Castle. At the end of the statue-filled balcony with two lost children of antiquity near the elevator shortcut back to the lamp, the garb, gloves, and trousers can be found. Purchased from the Bath Messengers after acquiring the Wheel Hunter Badge. For 60,000 blood echoes for the headpiece. Characteristics Decent physical defense Moderately high blunt defense Moderate overall elemental defenses High slow rapid poison resistances Poor frenzy resistance Decently high beast hood Notes This set has decent overall stats with high resistance to poisons, as most healing church attires do. The Gold Ardeo is the single most expensive piece of attire in the game. The Gold Ardeo has the highest bolt resistance in the game, which is strange since it's made of metal. Trivia The Hunter's Mark is present in the garb. It features the longest and widest holy shawl out of all healing church attires. It is presumed that Ludwig wears a tattered version of this attire. Looks pretty sweet. The, the head piece looks sort of like, what are those snacks called? The kind that are like crackers? in a cone shape that you can put on your fingers and pretend you have claws. Be bugles. It looks like a really big golden bugle. I'm so hungry. Let's uh Let's read the Page 4, Forsaken Canehurst Castle. A location in Bloodborne. The video game. Forsaken Canehurst Castle is the giant castle belonging to the Canehurst Vile Bloods, now abandoned to time, and covered in snow and ice following the raid of the executioners who slaughtered their inhabitants mercilessly leaving only the servants alive. Interestingly, the castle grounds, halls, and chambers are completely permeated by four identical statues. What makes them interesting is that only one of the statues is male, while the other three are representative of women. The great ruined castle is comprised of a large Patium, filled with ice and dead trees that appears to have catastrophically collapsed under its own weight. A great hall filled with servants that clean the floors and pillars of the luxurious castle. A dining room with the most luscious silverware decorating the tables can be seen as well as a large amount of portraits of royalty are exposed on the walls. 
But the most important part of this decadent construction is the gigantic library that has an unimaginable size. Truly colossal, and likely an indication of the history and elitist and refined standards of the vile bloods. the castle on the rooftops, a strange large wooden throne can be found, and beyond it lies a secret. Lore. The noble family that once lived there disappeared without a trace. Its grand stature is visible from Hemlock far into the distance, even though, even through the thick fog of the lake. It is unclear what has happened in terms of temporal progression in Kanehurst, as time appears stranger than in others of Yarnum. There's a typo there. Oh wait, no, there's not. I just read it wrong because I'm stupid and I have brain problems. As time in it appears stranger than in other areas, areas of Yarnum. <laughs> I almost had, like, a southern accent there. The other areas of Yarnum. Hyuk. Access. Reaching the castle requires the Kinehurst summons. If the player possesses the summons, approaching the big obelisk in the open area in Hemlock Charnel Lane, just before the witch's abode, will trigger a cutscene showing the arrival of a horse-driven carriage. Entering this carriage will transport the player to the castle and grant two insight. <laughs> More water. Vileblood Queen's Chamber is a location in Bloodborne. Throne room of the deceased king and the undead queen Annalise. The Vileblood Queen's Chamber lamp becomes available after defeating Martyr Logarius, then using the Crown of Illusions to open the secret door behind his throne. This lamp is in that room. <laughs> Queenly flesh is a key item in Bloodborne. In-game description. What remains of Annalise, Blood Queen of Kanehurst? This pinkish lump of flesh remains warm. As if cursed, all hail the undying queen of blood. That's me. Location, vile blood queen's chamber. Provide the unopened summons to Alfred near the entrance to the gatekeeper. And, <laughs> and then inspect the bloody remains of Annalise, queen of the vile bloods in her throne. Use. The queenly flesh can be taken to the altar of despair in order to resurrect Annalise, queen of the vile bloods. Inspect the altar, then select offer flesh to altar. The queenly flesh item will be removed from the inventory with the resulting message. Time flows in reverse for this scrap of flesh. Am I right, gamers? Afterwards, Annalise, Queen of the Vilebloods, can be found at her throne in the Vileblood Queen's chamber of Forsaken Kanehurst Castle. Note that she will still accept blood drags after being revived. Notes. Players must slay Abritus 
daughter of the cosmos, to unlock the altar of despair. Trivia. The lump of flesh seems to resemble not flesh, but some kind of organ. Most believing it is a liver. Mmm, delicious. It is also very possible that since Annalise is so heavily associated with childbirth and blood, that it could very well be a uterus instead. <laughs> Which would explain its paler color. Uh... Annalise will remark how she will now have no enemies as she was perceived dead, or at least harmless. <laughs> Bloody messenger head bandage is a key item in Bloodborne. Accessory adored by naive messengers imitating the bandages of scourge victims, unaware of their meaning. The spatters of blood give it a particularly nice touch. Really ties the look together. The inhabitants of the stump appear to have an interest in adornment. Why not let them be happy and revel as babes? <laughs> let them revel as babes. Leave them alone. <laughs> Availability. <laughs> Old Yarnum. Found in the rafters of the building behind retired hunter Jirok. Use. Offer it to the messengers residing in the stump behind the house in Hunter's Dream to change their appearance and make them look really, really cute and very nice. <laughs> I keep getting the same pages over and over when I hit random. Frenzied Cold Blood is a consumable item in Bloodborne. A rich droplet of cold blood containing blood echoes used to gain frenzied blood echoes. This manifestation of madness comes from a mind teetering on the very brink. But has the sane mind ever produced anything of true significance? Asking the real questions here. That's what I say to myself every day when I wake up in the morning. Crown of Illusions. The crown of illusions is a head attire in Bloodborne. <laughs> One of the precious secrets of Cainhurst. The old king's crown is said to reveal illusions and expose a mirage that hides a secret. And so, Logarius donned the crown of his own volition, determined to prevent a single soul from stumbling upon the vile secret. What visions did he see, sitting serenely upon his new throne? Trivia. It is unknown how Alfred got inside the vile blood queen's chamber without the crown, though it is likely that the player broke the illusion of her chamber and made it possible for any and all to see. To see, see, see. The League of Legends is a covenant in Bloodborne. Ah. The League is led by Valter, who seeks to destroy all vermin of the world. This covenant focuses on cooperative play. The League is a band of hunters who have taken an oath and are bound by a single purpose. 
By aligning yourself to the League led by a mysterious figure in a constable's garb and bucket helmet, you can assist other players online in the game and compete in the League's online rankings leaderboard. In addition to the League, players will also be able to summon co-op NPCs within the game, perfect for tackling challenging areas and bosses. Trivia, it is reminiscent to the Warriors of Sunlight Covenant in Dark Souls, as it also focused on jolly cooperation. Random page. Great Ones. Great Ones are a type of being in Bloodborne. The Great Ones are extremely powerful, multi-dimensional beings that can exist across several planes of existence. They have often been described as gods, and play a mysterious yet crucial role in the game's plot, as well as its lore. There is a certain amount of confusion surrounding what constitutes a true Great One, and how to distinguish them from a kin. This stems from the fact that kin bosses have tremendous power and or abilities that can be considered to be godlike. And since both have an alien appearance, it becomes hard to determine whether one is a true great one or an extremely powerful and oversized kin. <laughs> to put it simply, the kin are human beings that were graced by eldritch knowledge through the contact with the Great Ones. Great Ones themselves are unknown beings that are impossible to explain and comprehend through human thought. They merely exist, and they have desires and motives. Some fairly simple distinguishing factors are Great Ones bleed red when struck. Kin will bleed a pale yellowish fluid. Pee pee? <laughs> they bleed gamer girl pee. Great ones are unaffected by kin hunter blood gems that boost attack against kin. <laughs> Regardless, and most interestingly, this confusion that is made between kin and great ones is not only true for players who try to understand the game but also in-game. As many characters within the universe of Bloodborne will wrongly assume oversized and mighty kin to be great ones. Lore. The Healing Church has pursued a strange goal for a long, long time. A goal that has been hidden from all but the highest of rank among them. To summon or harness the power of the great ones. Beings not of this world, powerful enough to be seen as gods. Worshipped by most Yarnamites, either directly or indirectly, Great Ones are eldritch beings that reside on a higher plane than humanity. Initially revered by the scholars in Bergenworth, the Great Ones either directly or indirectly cause the scourge of the peace. A bloodborne affliction tracing back to contaminated blood found within the lost labyrinth of They were here in the labyrinth long ago. They appeared to be much closer than you'd think at Bergenworth. Men were sent into the labyrinth and an academy was built to understand the strange discoveries inside, generally called the truth. It seems the truth is a terrible thing, slowly breaking the mind of anyone who delves too deeply. Awful things happened at Bergenworth, and as a result, the church closed off not only the academy, but the entire forest, calling it Forbidden.
Whether or not the Great Ones are actually gods, or just higher levels of beings, is inconsequential. The question itself is entirely academic. The important thing is, they exist. They have an influence on the world. They appear to be ageless, but they can be killed. Their powers are strange things, often involving teleportation or energy, or things that the human world cannot do. Even perceiving the Great Ones properly requires great amounts of insight. Something Master Wom tried to do, at his own cost. There's quite a lot of lore. <laughs> The strongest of the Great Ones appears to be the Moon Presence, the creator of the nightmare the hunter is trapped within. Others are Odin, Ram, Murgo's wet nurse, Amygdala, the Celestial Emissary. That's a good one, I like that. <laughs> the Brain of Menses and Abritus. Odin, Odin, one of their number, has transcended even the others to the point that he no longer has a physical body, but instead is just a voice and an influence. God, I wish that were me. He is very powerful and has become sort of timeless, thus potentially making him the most powerful, yet the most indirect, of the Great Ones. He is also the only Great One to explicitly be referred to as male, with all the other's genders either female or undefined. Assuming the Great Ones even have human humanly <laughs> definable genders. Some items' descriptions tell about Great Ones living in the dream, and others living in the nightmare. Which is the case of Amygdala, whose function is to still to be defined, and Mergo's wet nurse. Humans have been able to contact them through the use of phantasm, little invertebrates found in the labyrinth. Interestingly, Mergo's wet nurse and the moon presence are themselves never directly identified as great ones. Whether this is merely an oversight or an indication that they are indeed a different class of being is unknown. The plague was used as an outlet by the Great Ones as an attempt to find a surrogate for their lost children. As evidenced in description, the description of each one-third of umbilical cord, this process involved the pale blued m pale blued <laughs> Pale blued moon. <laughs> the pale blued. Pale blood moon. I really just pronounced blood as blued. Can you tell I'm getting really sleepy? <laughs> oh no, there's blued everywhere. <laughs> and an attempt to foster a new child for a great one that lost their own. In the world of blued born. Babies that are treated as special in one way or the other are offered as lures to the Great Ones. When it comes to living creatures, the stronger or more advanced you are, the fewer offspring you produce in your life. The Great Ones have all lost their children because of their positions, and as a result, they're attracted to these special babies. The babies are one way of calling them. Every great one loses its child, and then yearns for a surrogate, and Odin, the foremost great one, is no different. To think, it was corrupted blood that began this eldritch liaison. Liaison. Li- Liaison. Liaison. Characteristics. The Great Ones are supernatural beings with incredible strength and stamina. They are demonic and godly in both appearance and abilities. 
The celestial emissary has the ability to disguise itself as a lesser kin to deceive enemies. The brain of Menzis can cause frenzy with its stare. Mergo's wet nurse can summon illusionary copies within a nightmare realm. The moon presence has the ability to levitate and controls the hunter's dream. Abritus, daughter of the cosmos, is able to create a more powerful star explosion. Explosion! Akin to a call beyond. Amygdala resides within the nightmare frontier and can create devastating lasers <laughs> with its eyes. In Rum, the vacuous spider is able to summon spider-like underlings at will. As seen with the hunter, it is possible for humans to become great ones. Let's all become great ones. New year, new me. I'm about to turn my life around. I'm going to have incredible strength and stamina and become a god. Let's see here. Trivia. The Great Ones are inspired from the works of H.P. Lovecraft, who wrote various books about eldritch horrors called Great Old Ones. Cosmic entities with godlike powers and forbidden knowledge. Ironically, the term Great Ones in his fiction actually referred to the so-called gods of the dreamlands, but they are not as powerful as the Great Old Ones and are not even as intelligent as most humans. However, they are protected by the outer gods, especially Nyalarsotep. While they once lived on peaks across the world, they were driven off of lower mountains by the spread of humanity until they had to leave Earth entirely. Leaving only a mark on Mount... Ooh. Granic. <laughs> the Great Ones now rule from their hidden fortress of Kadath, whose location in time and space is unknown, as well as occasionally returning to white-capped Thurai, Lyrian and Hathed Claw on cloud ships under the cover of a light mist. They abandoned Kadath for a brief period for the Sunset City, that Randolph Carter conjured in his dreams. The beings of this game are closer in nature to the Great Old Ones that subjected the Great Ones. Lovecraft's Great Ones were also residents of the Dreamlands, much like the Great Old Ones of the game. While many assume that beings such as Rom and the Celestial Emissary are not Great Ones, it should be noted that trophies gained for defeating them identify them as such. According to their lore and implications, however, they are still technically kin. This can be explained as a result of their human origins, but they have been able to reach a point where they transcend humanity entirely, be it from whatever process it may. Due to the nature of the cosmos and of the Great Ones, it can be theorized that killing, killing, <laughs> killing a Great One does not truly kill it, but only what physical form it has taken. This would make sense considering that in Lovecraft's stories, the Great Old Ones are far too powerful and unknowable for man to defeat. A lore note at Bergenworth states, When the red moon hangs low, the line between man and beast is blurred. And when the Great Ones descend, a womb will be blessed with child. Interestingly, the same states is applied for the amygdalae in the art book. Ariana Grande gets pregnant during Blood Moon and a lesser amygdala lives just outside the Ogden chapel. This begs the question whether Ogden or the amygdala blessed her with a child, 
Although the most widely and logical assumption is that Odin is the cause of the pregnancy, since the amygdalae are associated with that note merely because the sheer amount of them there are in Yahargul. This place is where the player is taken after the blood moon is triggered, so it makes sense. Oh. <laughs> so, that's about it for my reading of the Bloodborne wiki. <laughs> There was a lot of lore on this beautiful day. Also, I wanted to say thank you so much for 500,000 subscribers. I appreciate it a lot. I was really amazed that I made it to that number. Thank you so much for helping me reach that milestone. And, uh, I'll probably do another video as thanks sometime soon. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I have the hiccups again. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed my Bloodborne wiki reading. Hopefully it made you relax. Maybe you have it on in the background while you're doing other stuff. Whatever works. Whatever floats your boat. Oh yeah, I also have to thank everybody for all the super chats. I'll try to type quietly. <laughs> quietly. Koala. Koala. Bergenworth. Birkenworth, Birkenworth. Birkenworth, Birkenworth, Birkenworth. Birkenworth. Thank you so much, Eat That Horse, for your super chat. They said, Fear the old blood. Ooh, woo. Thank you, Snowball. Snowball said, You have such a cute voice. Thank you. Scarada says, hit us with the, the clean yeet. Yeet. Clean yeet. Clean yeets for clean feet. Thank you, Scarada. Thank you, Moiken. Did I pronounce that right? I saw earlier that you said that the the J is silent or like a Y. Thank you so much. I hope you're having a very happy holiday. And thank you, Burl Waffles. Thank you, the Arch Jin. Thank you, Crystal Panda One. Thank you, Shay Dragneo. They said, she has such a calm and soothing voice, she'd actually be able to scare people. <laughs> Imagine actually conversing with her in real life, suddenly she decides to go grar. <laughs> I'd be shocked, still enjoy it though. <laughs> I guarantee you that if you were to talk to me in real life, I would annoy the crap out of you. I'm talking quietly right now because it's ASMR, but usually when I do like video game Twitch streams and stuff, I'm always yelling. I'm always hooting and hollering. I'm trying to be quiet. <laughs> I won't. I won't go grar in your ears. I promise. Thank you so much, Shay. Thank you, gentle penguin. <laughs> Hello, Taylor. Love your feet. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Tassel. Tassel says, cozy. Thank you, Lunar. Thank you so much. Ooh, woo. 
Thank you for modding also. It's very, very nice of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Viper Ferranzi, for $50. What the heck? Thank you so much. Thank you again, Shay. Shay says, I must say, Bergen is worth hearing you. <laughs> Bergenworth. Bergenworth. Not a newbie, says, get good scrub. I don't know if I'll ever get good. Thank you, Draco Vox. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you. Thank you again, Shay. Shay says, I have one more Oreo left. I am afraid to use it. <laughs> what do you use Oreos for aside from eating them? Are you like, Making a tower out of Oreos? <laughs> Good luck with your Oreos and thank you. Thank you, Ice Griffin. Oh no, not the black lung. <laughs> I will recover swiftly, I assure you. Thank you, one crazy robo. They said, big Mick thankies from mixed bankies for the ASMR. <laughs> Thumbs up emoji. Thank you, Gokaius. I hope I said that right. I'm sorry if I said it wrong. Thank you for the very nice compliment. Thank you, Bishop Wurstler. I, I'm your truth. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Hobsy Gobsworn. Thank you. I hope you're having a happy holiday. I'm glad you're loving it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again, Viper, for the yeets. Thank you, Tristan Pierdon, Basoinga. And thank you, <laughs> Corvide Ova. Okay, this is epic. Pee 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 ka. Pee pee. Pee pee poo poo. <laughs> Let's get this bread. <laughs> oh, thank you to all the French people watching my stream. I hope you have a good sleep. Don't stay up too late. <laughs> thank you so much. Maui Gayan Bagong Taon means Happy New Year in Tagalog. I probably butchered the crap out of that. Thank you. Thank you, Kaleo Gregory. Thank you for the congrats on 500k. <laughs> I'm really nervous. Thank you, Viper again. For the yeets. Pee pee. <laughs> pee pee yeet. <laughs> One of these days I gotta stream Bloodborne again on Twitch. It's just I'm really lazy and I have to like hook my PS4 up to a capture card. And it's hard to figure out how to get that to work. <laughs> I see Japanese people in the chat. Hello, Japanese people. What time is it in Japan right now? Oh. Ohayo gozaimasu. Hello. Hello, person from Austria. I hope you're having a good night. Can we get an F for all the people who died in Minecraft today? <laughs> yes. Please pay your respects. 
to our fallen soldiers of Minecraft. They worked hard to get those diamonds in the mines, and they lost them all in the lava. Smash that F button. Thank you, Cabbage Storm, and thank you, Gokaius. If you're awake at 4 a.m., you need to go to sleep. And thank you, Viper Veronzi. I, I do already have a Patreon. I've had one for like two years now, and I kind of, I either forget to put the link in my descriptions, or I feel like it's not relevant in a lot of videos that I post. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just dumb. And absent-minded. I forget things a lot. Wow, that's a lot of Fs. Oh, and hello to all the Russian people watching. Privet and Spasiba. Those are some of the only things I know how to say in Russian. Thank you, Hopsy Gobsworn. And thank you, Dirk. Is your icon... Is your icon the dad from Jimmy Neutron? Because that looks really scary. Witness me. Okay. I really gotta go. It's been like over two hours. And I gotta go eat dinner because I'm really, really... But yeah, I hope, I hope this was enjoyable for those who are watching. <laughs> uh, I'd love to do some more in the future. And I'm also gonna buy one of those goofy looking ASMR mics with the ears on the sides, the 3DO. So... I'll start doing streams with that. Right now I'm using the Rode NT1 XLR mic. <laughs> Big chunks. Tight night chunks. Thank you so much everybody. Thank you, Pascal. Small yeet. I hope you have somebody to hug you. You will someday. Someday soon. Don't give up hope. <laughs> it is very expensive. But yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to try doing legitimate ASMR. I'm really bad at it. But I'll learn. I just want to rub things on a microphone and whisper words. Sometimes that's all you gotta do. Just live life without regrets and whisper some words. But yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Big, <laughs> what's a chungus? <laughs> no Fs for the Fortniters, I'm sorry. We already gave out Fs for the Minecrafters. Yes, I'm very, very wise. I have to attain all of the knowledge in the world so that I can ascend and become a great one. Blah. My mouth clicked. I have too much spit in my mouth and it made a gross spit noise. 
help me. <laughs> Say, oh, Oni Chungus. Noise. I really, I really, really gotta go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm really bad at ending streams because I always want to stay and talk to everybody. I'm going to transcend now. I'll be up in the heavens looking down on all of you. Whenever you look outside and you see the full moon, just know that I'm also looking out at the moon at the same time as you. And we are spiritually linked. <laughs> Opa Gangnam style. <laughs> I really like... I'm sorry, I'm rambling again, but I really like that chart that shows like the different sizes of cat and the really big, <laughs> the really big one is called like a, a chonker, a big chunk, <laughs> mega chunk. <laughs> oh, and thank you, Tom Garvey. Your icon is Dio. It's me, Dio. Okay. La, 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 la. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you have a wonderful night. I don't know when my next live stream will be, but I'll alert you to it whenever. But yeah, thank you. I love you all. Happy holidays. I hope you have a very happy new year. 2019 is going to begin. Isn't that crazy? It's almost 2020. It's really weird to think about. There have been a lot of years. And that is my wisdom for the day. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. I can't tell you, sweet little lies. I have to go. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Have, have a happy Bloodborne. May you find your worth in the waking world. I said the thing. Okay, goodbye for real. <laughs>